Welcome to episode 214 of Clarity Compressed. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host. And today we're going to talk about the difference between listening and hearing. <laughs> Let the good times roll. This is Clarity Compressed. I actually didn't even know if this episode was going to make it out the door. The last week of my life has been probably one of the most emotionally challenging weeks I can imagine um, that I can remember having in a really, really long time. Uh, the reasons uh, span a whole distance uh, from parenting to foster parenting to being married. It's all in the mix. It's all been heavy. Um, meanwhile, right, we're growing several companies. It's it's a real thing. And so um, this morning, I didn't know if I was going to have time to do it. I usually record the podcast by Friday, the weekend before it's released on the Tuesday. So a Friday, and then we usually have Saturday, Sunday, Monday to edit. Um, here we are, Monday afternoon. Um, and I'm squeezing in a minute because this is not going to be the week that I miss the podcast. So if you're following along, thank you so much for being a part of this. I put a little bit of thought into what is most relevant in my life. If you usually want to know that, you can kind of just listen to the podcast and understand that I'm going to talk about what's relevant in my life at the moment. So this is it. Listening versus hearing. I think it's something that anyone who engages in any kind of communication with the goal of building relationship, um, building, working together, building intimacy in any way, this is an extreme distinction that I need to understand in a better way, and I think most people have room to grow. And so I think uh, talking about this is, is a valid topic for just about everybody on um, on the subscriber list for the podcast or the email. So listening versus hearing. I know you've probably heard the phrase like, you're not hearing me, right? And you've heard that before, or maybe you've said it before. And what that really means is that the person that you're communicating with maybe is understanding the words that you're saying, or they're listening, and, but they're not actually getting the intention that's underneath of it. So I really broke this down into kind of three levels of hearing or three levels of listening with the most entry level one being I'm just listening. And the, the highest level one is like you're actually being heard. And so here's how I break those two things. There's three things down. Number one, listening, just straight listening, right? What does that actually involve? What do you actually have to do to listen to somebody? Well, first, you don't talk. <laughs> it's very basic. It's like if I'm talking, that means I'm not listening. So listening at its very basic sense means I'm open and perceiving what is coming in and not pushing out, but I'm absorbing. I'm listening. I'm being quiet. I'm making eye contact, and I'm letting the other person have the stage. I'm letting the other person communicate words that I will listen to. So that's listening. I'm listening. I can listen for words. I can listen for sounds. Um, but that's the basic level of what I, would, what I would say is defining the word listening. Now, I think the next step uh, forward, um, actually, it's probably a pretty seismic step forward, is something that is called active listening. Now, active listening means I'm not only not talking and I'm not only perceiving what's coming in and being quiet, but I'm actually thinking about it and processing it and then asking questions to show you that I am engaged in the conversation and asking questions that might give me more context on what you're saying. So questions like, how did that make you feel? Questions like, what I'm hearing you say is this. Well, that's not a question, but what, what I'm hearing you say is, and then repeating back to the person what you think they just said to you. This is a very effective um, communication tool. A lot of people use it to work through issues. They use it to understand conflict or what's going on uh, more because it's easy to make assumptions going into conversations, right? Our emotions are involved. Our predispositions are involved. Our preconceived ideas and our prejudices. All of this is a part of our perception of a situation. And when someone is speaking to us, it's easy to overlay all of those things on what they're saying. And it colors it to now all of a sudden be something else than what perhaps they intended to communicate. So by asking the question or by making the statement, well, what I'm hearing you say is that you feel this way because of this. What I'm hearing you say is you're afraid. What I'm hearing you say is um, 
you really are eager to do this. However, there are some things out of your control that have gotten in the way, right? That's a clarifying question. And then the original speaker, right? So the other person speaking to me, I'm listening. I engage in active listening to say what I'm hearing you say is or giving some more context to that. Then the original speaker has the opportunity to say, yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Most often, they will add another level of clarification to what you heard them say, right? So they said something. I came back with, oh, well, I'm hearing you say this. And then they have an opportunity then to bring that even tighter and clarify it a little bit more by saying like, oh, well, part of that's true, but actually it was a little bit of this. And then they have the opportunity to correct that nuance even a little bit more. So as you can see, there's just listening and then active listening moves us like eons into the future because it increases, um, inc increases understanding on both parties. And once there's a dialogue and a conversation, it's much uh, more common for everyone to feel engaged in the conversation. This is what leads us to the goal of communication, the goal of what we're saying. It is not to just say words when you communicate to someone. You don't just want them to listen. You want them to be heard. So there's listening and then there's active listening and then there's hearing. Hearing is the top. Like, I hear you. I hear you as something that's easily said but not easily done. Hearing involves it has a lot less to do with the actual words you're saying. To be heard doesn't necessarily have to do with the exact words you're saying. Typically speaking, there are all these other layers of communication that are happening at once. There's words, there's feelings, there's body language, there's past things, right, that have been become a part of a conversation, especially the longer you have relationship. And to be heard is to be understood, right? Those two things, being heard is, is to be understood. And when you're working to hear somebody, now you're thinking very empathetically. Now you're in the mode, you're like, I wonder what is affecting, how, I wonder how they're feeling about this whole thing. I wonder how they're feeling, what their intention actually is, regardless of the words they say, right? Lawyers argue over words, right? They argue over words. People who want to communicate do the work to actually think about the intention, to actually think about um, the heart behind the statement, the heart behind the communication. So being heard is really the goal of communication. So as the listener, you can be like, well, I'm listening to you. You can ask questions and be an active listener, which really shows that you're engaged, or you could hear. I want to be a person that hears other people. In my velocity, in my momentum, you know, in the inertia of just my life, it's easy to listen and not take the time to hear. But when I look at the expert communicators, when I look at the expert leaders, when I look at the expert relationship havers, what I realize is that they are experts at hearing. That's why they seem so intuitive. That's why their decision-making seems so much better. It's because they've actually honed the craft of hearing, not listening, but hearing. And so this is great. Again, if you're a leader of people in business, this is great. If you're in customer service, this is great. If you're in a relationship with someone over time, right? A marriage benefits a ton from hearing, hearing and from active listening and from listening. But really, once you move to active listening and hearing, that's where intimacy is developed. If you're a parent, you already know this. If you're a parent, you need to hear your children, not just listen to their needs or you need to know when you're when your teenager says something, or even not even a teenager, but maybe it's a little bit more common with teenagers, they say something, but there's things about their body language and their emotional state where if you're paying attention to hearing, you're like, I know they said those words, but that is absolutely not what they're trying to communicate right now. So we know this. So that is how I break down listening versus hearing. This is something I'm working out in real life, in real time, by no means an expert, but I aspire to be the best hearer that has ever walked the planet Earth. And you know how you do that? I'm going to do that by practicing. And I'm doing that right now by trying to communicate that with you. So I hope you don't just listen to this podcast. I hope you, well, you can't active listen, but I, I hope you hear what I'm saying. I hope you can apply some of it to your life. And the more of us that are applying this and hearing one another, guess what? The better it's going to be for all of us. Thank you for listening. Thank you for working on things like I'm working on things. Keep pursuing that clarity. And I will see you next week. We came to fight.